Hello, this is an assessment of a Steinway Model O Grand Piano. That's five foot ten and a half inches long. Made in 1980. I'm just assessing it to see what work might improve the piano. Now, before we do that, the case is extremely interesting on this piano. Um, and if you are a technician or if you've Steinway Restore, you might like to help because I don't think I've ever seen this veneer before on any piano. Um, so let's go right in the whole thing. And if I say if you're in the trade and are familiar with it, it'd be very interesting to know what it is. Um, I, I'm not even going to try and guess. It's got sort of swirly patterns like you might have in rosewood, but it, it's going in this direction too, which is unusual for rosewood. I'm not a wood person really, so I'm not claiming to, to be very knowledgeable on that. The top of it, again, it's a very beautiful pattern. Still got rosewoody tendencies, but I'm sure it wouldn't be rosewood. I don't think it would be in 1980 anyway. So um, let's have a look at the underside of that. So there's no fading on it, which is very encouraging. Polyestered, um, but there's no, no fading. If you have a polyestered piano, it's important to close it regularly so that you don't get a fade line appearing, appearing here. Um, as I said on other videos, it's really important to keep the value of the piano, and all, well, to keep the piano um, the same colour throughout. And as we'll see later on, this has faded. Um, again, it's interesting to think about what colour it was originally. This is presumably where music has stood for, for a while, um, so you've got a darker patch there. That's another thing if you, if you keep music on a music desk, you might get a fade patch on it. And underneath here is a darker colour, so presumably if we look at the difference there, you can see it was, was darker originally. I've tested the tuning pins, even on a modern piano it can be slightly on the loose side, especially if it's been tuned, pitch raised, an awful, uh, tuned rather, an awful lot, and these have been moved. Ideally, as I've mentioned before, it's good to, if you need to pitch raise, about up a couple of beats to 442 if possible. Well, this one is actually 438, so it needs pitch raising. I would take it to 442. Um, so that subsequent tunings you don't need to turn so many pins. The whole thing, uh, to me, the art of tuning is trying not to turn too many pins and therefore if you haven't got to pitch raise all the time you're going to turn less pins hopefully and obviously the environment is stable. Looking at the soundboard here is perfect as you would expect from a 1980s piano. Tuning pins are tight, um, just slightly less tight than they were when they were new but um, certainly tight enough to keep it well in tune as uh, so the strings these are all original and um, nice string line it's, uh, it's all original Steinway um, you can see from the colour of the strings too get, gets an idea of how old the piano is so 1980s obviously this is what you expect from an, that piano age of pianos no moth in the felt surprisingly moth can attack felts on modern pianos too so that's useful to know that's encouraging Dampers are coming up slightly higher than we would set them normally um, to certainly clear the, the the wedges got to clear but not quite as high as that so th perhaps the dampers perhaps the stop rail could be adjusted a bit but that's very minor. Now these are ivory keys, one piece ivory which you get in 1980s um, very often on, on top quality pianos you can see little bits of grain, I don't know if you'll be able to see that it's clearly ivory um, but needs buffing because it will attract the dirt it's um, it's basically quite dull so that will attract dirt if it's not buffed and these are a little bit rough I don't think that really matters but just thinking about the cosmetics of it some of these are rough and most of the nails maybe have got into them a bit and you can see from the sides of the keys uh, where it's it's obviously been played quite a lot as we'll see in a minute when you look at the hammers um, normally those would be coloured back in but that's just cosmetic one thing that surprised me is it has two pedals uh, instead of three I'm not really sure whether I want to ask if you're a subscriber um, or you just know the answer to this 1980s piano from Steinway with two pedals instead of the um, Sostenuto as well uh, I don't know if that's common and I can't quite think when they came in, although we sold plenty of them, I just have to research that to see when the when you when the third pedal would come in normally. See the logo on Steinway there is quite small, so that's like a modern logo. This of course can be buffed up to look much much shinier, um, but that's only cosmetic. 
Having taken the fall off, you can also see where the sharps were here, clearly much darker, so the piano is generally faded. And also here you can see much, much darker colour, so that's probably the original colour of the piano. And listening to the tone of the piano, the important treble area, as we mentioned before, isn't really bringing out the harmonics as it should do. And up here is quite weak. Uh, that's because the hammer needs refacing, I think, mainly. Uh, but uh, we'll look at the hammers in a minute and think about them. But a nice, solid, beautiful bass tone. But um, again, the hammers are, are, need to be a bit clearer and crisper, I think. But it's a good, good, solid tone. And round the break point. Very well made piano, of course. Just checking for moth under the keys too, but uh, there is no moth and uh, there's no unevenness on in the touch in that sense. So that's uh, that's the good news. Now looking at the hammers, uh, they're quite flat, as we can see there. That should be rounded shape, and they're quite flat. So it's been played a lot, um, and you can see that, that you can't see the indentation of the strings there. Now that normally means that the hammer's a bit loose, and it is indeed, the hammers are tending to be a bit, a bit loose on this hinge, so to move the hammer, we can actually feel sideways play on it. Um, so that's the, the reason why we don't see indentations in the hammers. I think they've been, perhaps the unaccorded pedal has been used as well, which should tend to um, cancel out the indentations as well. So looking at the top there, and you can see there's too much hammer hitting the string, that's why we haven't got a clear sound up here either. So uh, definitely refacing would help tremendously. But I think because we need to correct this as well, we would, if it was a stock piano we took into stock, we would definitely change hammer shanks and rollers. They, obviously the new hammer takes a lot of work to, and needs to bed in as well and be played in. So that's quite a big decision to make. Refacing these is possible, but quite a lot of hammer's gone. Uh, you're not going to get hugely, not not really the kind of sound you'd like to get. And actually, they're very, very hard. I think some liquid's been put on these, especially at the top end. You can feel, I can hardly get my nail into them at all here. So I think liquid's been put into those, uh, which makes it very difficult to work on them. So it would be much better to change them, a new set of hammers. Um, these, This is uh, original Steinway and Renner now have bought, uh, sorry, Steinway bought Renner. So the two companies merge, as it were, and uh, uh, we, we always buy from Renner anyway, who make all the slimy parts, so that's uh, that's encouraging. The roller here also is a little bit flat, and that's meaning the hammer is sitting on this um, on this cushion here. It shouldn't be, it should be about there. So the hammer blow distance needs altering, but of course everything's going to change when we put new hammers on, if that's what we do. But I think that's what's needed to be done, really. There's not really a way of avoiding that. Set off and so on, other adjustments, spring adjustment. Um, springs are, work, are working well when it's new hammers on, we need to readjust the springs. And uh, it's, it's a lot of work, obviously, and costly as well. So worth doing. The, these are tight, these felts here. The key, the key felts are tight at the front as well. So that's, that's encouraging. So the main work that he's doing is hammers, shanks and rollers, as we've said many, many times before. And then regulation generally, the, the jacks are a bit high. Um, the back checks are a little bit worn, but they've got really not having to be changed, I don't think. Though it's not too big a job to just unscrew these and put new ones on, but then they've got to be re-regulated. So that's an assessment of a Steinway Model O grand piano made in 1980. And it's a wonderful piano. Um, I'm very interested to know what this casework is. It's evenly faded throughout, which is very encouraging. And it's very beautiful too. Now the piano's tone has huge potential and already does sound good because it's a Steinway. But the hammers, if they're refaced or better still, replaced, and I think really they do need replacing, partly because the, the, the hinges are also loose and, and the rollers are worn. And it's such a good piano that it's well worth doing the work. Because the tone isn't very clear around here at the moment and up here it's very weak it's all to do with the hammers too much hammer hitting the string
sana sa unsa. Always look for a good tenor tone, uh, and that's a sign of a very good piano maker. Of course, as we say, round here is the more important, but if you can get a good tenor as well. And this really does singing. And the action as well needs regulating to get a more finesse of touch. So it's basically a very, very very pleasant piano indeed. I'm very impressed by it. The keys need buffing because they're going to attract dirt if they're not buffed. And it will be a great pleasure to restore this piano. It has plenty of power though at the moment. That sense of power is taken away by the hammers not being, not being clear. And round here it's very hard to play very controlled. Thank you very much for listening. As an afterthought, I should have done this earlier and I forgot to mention about the touch, which is, this is 48 grams here. Um, so on the light side, that's middle C. Um, well, we would set the touch between 48 and 50 grams. That C sharp's just about to go down as well. But there's quite an unevenness of touch further down. Um, you would expect a couple of grams more as you go towards the base. That one is reasonably good. But there are some here that don't go down at all, even adding more weight. So that's one's needing an extra six grams put on it. Uh, so that's 54 grams roughly. And just tapping the bottom to overcome the inertia but um, it's reluctant to go down. That one is going down much very quickly, you can see. So there's an unevenness of, of action here. There's another one, which the client pointed out to me, and um, it's very true. So there's, th those are all going down nicely. There's just a few that are, well, the general unevenness. So we obviously put it on the bench and reweight the whole piano um, after we've put the hammers on. So that's, that's standard work that needs doing, but would improve the evenness um, and the sense of control that you have when you're playing the piano.